What's up YouTube? My name's Quickie, welcome back to the channel. Um, today I'm going to have a crack at making a box pan brake. Um, primarily what we do on this channel is project bikes. and I'm in the middle of doing a cafe racer for my mate. Um, but we're going to need um, to be able to fold sheet metal so I can do the under tray and various electrics tray and various other bits and pieces. Um, I haven't got anything at the minute that will do the job. I went looking online for a sheet metal brake. Oh my God, how expensive are they? Really, like hundreds of quid to worth of expensive. And I haven't got that sort of money. However, looking at them, they're actually quite simple. And rather than just having a sheet metal brake, which is one solid, I'll, I'll put a picture up, you'll see what I mean. But basically they have a fixed length of blade that uh, you clamp the metal under and then you move a platen up from underneath it and it just puts a fold into the metal. That's all it does. Um, but they're okay up to a point. If you want to do a box or a tray, so it's basically got four folded up edges, if you can't change the length of the folding blade, it gets interesting when you get to fold three, because you fold two ends up, turn it round, you go to fold the other end up, and this, the, the, the blade just gets in the way. You can't, you can't easily do it without putting a piece of wood underneath it to make the gap up and all that kind of stuff. However, a box pound brake is the same sort of thing. However, instead of a fixed length of blade, it's made up of lots of vertical blades and you can choose how many you put in. So you can decide whatever length blade you want. And it just makes the job a lot easier. But I'm not about to pay 500 quid for one. I couldn't believe it when I saw that. So I'm gonna make one. Um, hopefully it will do the job. We just have to wait and see, eh? So let me show you what I've got. Right, so I've ordered 60 quid's worth of steel. <laughs> uh, and this is what I've got. It's all mild steel, it's bright steel as well. Um, doesn't have any mill scale on it. Uh, and I tend to order and use bright steel instead of the other stuff, just because the dimension that you order is the dimension that you actually get. Um, so this, this is 40 mil angle and it really is 40 mil it's not like 40 and a bit or 41 um, so yeah anyway that's six mil um, there's six mil as well this is what I'm going to be using for the plates that is eight mil uh, you know for the blades rather um, but yeah I've also got a, a, there's another three meter length of this stuff behind me but it's too big to get on the desk so let's move that out of the way and I'll, sh I'll show you what I'm planning. Where are we? Let's zoom in a bit. Right, so this is basically what I'm going to be making. Um, just to explain, um, that six mil angle, we're going to have two pieces of that stuck together. So one piece will be upturned. Um, so obviously that corner and that corner is level. And then there'll be another piece behind it. I will need to trim this up slightly to make it fit, because obviously it's going to be a different height. But essentially that's just there to keep it rigid. The front face is going to be slotted. So 10 mil in, 30 mil slot, 10 mil space, 30 mil slot, repeat as necessary, okay? And between these slots, on the inside of this angle, there will be a triangular gusset and I'll probably do that like once every two or so, I don't know, something like that. Um, reason for those gussets in there is I want this leading edge to be kept as rigid as I possibly can do. That way I'll get a nice clean bend. Uh, on the end, we're going to need to cap it. So it'll be another piece of angle, um, which will go on here. Um, I will need to extend this down. Um, and it's going to be boxed in at the back as well. So essentially it's a box on three corners with a hole in the top. All right, and that's all it is really. On the inside, I'm gonna put um, a little lip. Um, and the reason being is I want to keep the blade captive. Um, this is gonna be one of the blades made out of that thicker stuff that I've got. And this is obviously an end on view of it. So you have the main blade, which will be whatever width. There'll be a 45 degree um, bevel on the end of it. So as it's clamped down it, it grips up nicely with the material underneath it. A bolt that goes through and then a captive plate on the back of it. 
So the captive plate would go behind, yeah, on the inside of this angle. The blade would go on the outside and the bolt would screw through and keep it all there. This runner um, is basically just to align that captive, um, uh, the captive fixing on the inside. So that all gets welded together, all dressed up, it's all nice and neat. Um, as far as the blade widths go, I'm going to have a number of different sizes. I want to be able to bend anything up to 800mm and as small as 20mm. So the blade sizes, the, the blade widths are going to go 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 50 and then all the rest of them will just be 60. Reason being is that if I want to do say, I don't know, a 55mm box, well I haven't got a 55mm blade, but I can put a 25 and a 30 together, um, butt them up nice and close, and that will give me the 55. If I want to do a 57mm or something stupid like that, I'll just put a 2mm space between the blades. Easy enough, and it should work, it should be fine. Um, as far as the bending platen goes, this is the bit that will sit underneath that top bit, yeah? And this is the bit that gets fixed to the, the, the edge of the desk. So there'll be bolts that go through here at various places and that will basically screw into the woodwork. The, the bench kind of sits here. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so that will be made out of angle and there'll be another piece of angle across the front. So this will be our folding surface. I will put some handles on it just to make it easier. <laughs> um, it is going to need a pivot point, which is what this is. So it will probably be divided into four sections. So just a tube cut into four. Two of them would be welded to that surface. Two of them be welded to the folding surface so it's nice and strong. And there'll obviously be a pin that goes through the middle of it. The centre of that pin, I need to be level with this top surface here um front and back the reason being then is everything pivots around that joint um it's not like a door hinge where it's offset to one side it all needs to be dead in line but the idea is is that the the sheet of metal would go in here the top assembly clamps onto the top of this and then you fold you you basically move this this front piece of angle upwards and that's what puts the bend into it by pressing against the blade so that's it really, it's, it's, it looks pretty simple, um, certainly not worth 500 quid, I'll give it that. Um, so we're going to try and see if we can make it out of 60 quid's worth of steel. Should be straightforward enough, I hope. But anyway, let's get to it. couple of little points for you. Um, I'm not trying to teach you anything or say this is how you got to do it. This is just what I do. Um, if ever I'm working in stuff, you know, doing a project similar to this, um, whenever I'm cutting stuff up and I want it to be, um, you know, quite exact really, Sharpies I've found aren't really the best thing. The, especially as they get old, the line that you draw gets wider and wider and wider. I mean, one of these is what, two and a half mil wide? So if you're only using like a very thin bladed bandsaw, whereabouts on that line do you cut? Um, so I don't particularly like using Sharpies for that. What I do use is one of these, it's a scribe. It's hardened steel, I've got two of them, just like a set. 
I think it's like one pound fifty or something off eBay. Cheap as chips, but they're so much better because you get a really fine line when you scribe something. The other thing is when you're cutting stuff, you tend to use cutting oil, especially on a bandsaw. Um, and you find I just find that you get a build up of filings or shavings or whatever where the saw's cutting it, you can't really see a great deal anymore. And if you, especially if you're using cutting oil, you wipe it and the sharpie just disappears. Where's your line gone? With a scribe, you can wipe it and your line's still there because obviously it's, it's scratched into the metal surface. Um, I do mark a center line in sharpie, just as a point of reference. I don't need it on this. I just, I quite like to have a center line. Um, and the other thing I do is I write the measurement in Sharpie on whatever it is. Um, the number of times I've cut stuff up, gone to weld it together, picked up the wrong bit, and only discovered it after I've welded it, that I've, <laughs> I've put the wrong bit on. Um, you know, it does happen. Um, stupid little things like this, it only takes a second to do. Um, I just find it's worth doing. So, um, we've got a 900, 810, 90810. Um, so two of these are going to be our um, folding pattern, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. So I need to obviously trim a little bit off the back here, but that will sit up something like that. I'll trim the end down so this obviously goes flat. Um, this one is going to be the bottom folding pattern, and we'll go something like that. Um, we'll come to this one later on. We're gonna crack on and get this one done first because I need to sort out some hinges and various other bits. Um, so bear with me and I'll get that sorted. Um, the idea here is that these two marry up like so. I'll cut this into um, four equal pieces, stick that in there, and then I've got I've got some of this, but it's straight. That will go through, um, and I will probably weld it to the last one. Can you see that? Yeah, something like that. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, but the, the centre of this hole, um, this, this is 12 mil in diameter. Um, I've taken six millimetres off each side. So that basically sits right in the middle and the centre line of this is right in line with the fold line, which is great. So I've just got to cut that into four, cut it to the right length and cut two pins. Easy enough. Right, so a little bit of faffing about later on. We've got the folding pattern. Um, all I've done is weld these bars on the back just so I've got something to hang on to. Um, there was a little bit of monkeying about with the hinges, a little bit of grinding, blah, blah, blah. Um, because we're kind of limited on this, but I've left the welds dead chunky on here. They're ugly as hell, but I wanted to get more material in there to um, just to give it a bit more strength on the hinge. If you look on the back of it, I've dressed these down. Um, you can probably see better on here. I've ground them down. So well, blob a weld and then I flatted it all off just because otherwise it was going to limit the amount that the, the platen would open. And I want this pretty much to be dead flat. Um, but yeah, this will be drilled um, and bolted onto the end of the bench. I'll probably extend it a little bit as well just you know give it a bit more leverage make it a little bit more secure 
um, but we'll just do that with whatever scraps and stuff we've got left over at the end of it. So anyway, on to the top one. Right, so these are the pieces for our top plan. So this is the bit that's actually going to be doing the bending. This one's 810 mil long, this one's 900 mil long. Um, we've got a reference on centre line as well, just to make it a little bit easier. Um, but essentially, this back one I want to kind of marry up to the top of this. Um, reason being is that it's just going to give it a lot more strength. It kind of boxes it out. Um, and it also gives me uh, mounting points on the ends that I can bolt through so I can clamp the whole thing down. Um, but the thing is, obviously, when you... If, if you look at the difference in height, because this one, the, it's the diagonal that's on the bench. This one, it's the side that's on the bench. This is obviously taller than this one. So we need to trim a little bit off here, um, which isn't going to be so hard. A couple of ways of doing it. You could just measure it like that. Comes out as about 32 mil. Stick it on there, chop it off. Once you've marked it, obviously. Um, another way would be get another piece of angle put that up to it like so put that like that and then get a marker and just score the line across there which is probably the way I'm going to do it because it involves less measuring Okay, so I've trimmed this edge down, so you can see it's a bit narrower than that side. Okay, um, and the idea is, is that this is going to go onto there, like that. Okay, so with the the the, the corner. Of, of this piece in line with the edge of the longer piece um, I get a nice little gap all the way down here so I can get a whole ton of weld in there make it really nice and strong and then we'll grind it all down and dress it up and on here I'm not sure if you can see but there is an overhang so this surface goes like this and then there's a vertical surface that comes up from the piece underneath so in order to get the same sort of gap so I can get the weld in, what I'm going to do is take the corner off this, shave it down by sort of 4mm, something like that. So again, I get a nice gap between this and the edge of, of this piece. Again, I can get a whole load of weld in there, and then I can dress it all back and make a nice smooth surface. So grinding the top off that is the next job. Right, unfortunately I've had to use the angle grinder just to cut the last little bit off because this is the maximum height that can go into the bandsaw. Basically the, the arm just catches on the top of the material. So I'm going to have to chop the last little bit off, which isn't a problem. Easy enough. Right. So the other thing I'm having to do monkey about with blades a little bit um, basically because um, because of the way the holes are set 
Um, there's going to be issues with having a mounting point for each of the blades. So if I just show you this very quickly, Ooh, hang on, you might disappear. <laughs> there we go. Right, so each of these blades obviously needs a mounting hole to go to. And ideally, I want the mounting hole is going to be in the middle of each of these plates or bars or blades or whatever you want to call them. So all these need to line up. So I've laid them out next to the um, top plenum, which plenum, platen, um, which I've milled some bolt holes into. And I want the center hole to be able to line up with each of them. So you can see on each of these it does. There's always a hole for it. Um, but as you start getting towards the end, just because of the spacing of them, I can't just do 60 mil. But I've decided to do some bigger blades as well. Um, purely because if I'm bending up, you know, a longer piece, to me it just makes sense to have a wider blade. Um, there'll be less flex in it because it's one solid piece rather than lots of blades all bolted down. Um, not that that's going to be an issue anyway, I don't think. But it just makes it easier and it's very slightly quicker. So there you go. So let's get these trimmed down so they're all the right length. I'll probably have to face them off in the mill. And then we can put the 45 degree on the blades and start assembling it and see what it's going to look like. So that's all good. So now we just need to start putting some holes in the blades. Um, basically, I need to... to where the blades come off the front of this, it's obviously going to come at an angle. And the folding platen underneath, I need to decide quite where that's going to be. I've got some more of this angle, which is basically going to be welded on the ends of this, but on the back of it. And then from there, I can build a pivot point. So what I'm thinking is I've made a loader, but I haven't made all the blades. Um, I've made enough for what I need to do. Um, here and now sort of thing for the bike um, and I'll just make up some extra ones later on but I'm thinking the blades probably need to go something like this um, reason for the overhang at the top is so it will actually go the other way around but whatever um, reason for the overhang at the top is when I put all the blades on I'll be able to put a straight edge across the top and get them all level these have all been milled so there's a 45 degree angle on one end and they're all faced off on the other end um, and that is parallel to this. Um, so basically by putting a, a straight edge across the top I'll be able to get all the blades lined up at the top and then they're all lined up at the bottom. So I'm thinking it will go something like that. So that being the case, where's my ruler? We want a hole, um, probably, I don't know, 30 mil down. 30 mil down. So all I'm doing here is making the uh, retainers for the blades. Um, it's going to be a channel on the back of the top platen that these ride in. Uh, and the easy way to do it, as far as I can see, <laughs> is I've marked out um, marked out 20 mil spaces, drilling each of them, tapping each of them, and I'll grind down one edge and the other edge just to put like a little chamfer on it because the where, where the angle is, the inside angle is never like a perfect, you know, perfectly sharp angle. So we'll grind a little bit of relief off in the corners and then I'll just lop them off in the bandsaw. Easy. So now we can start sticking it all together. Got most of the bits made now, so why not indeed?
Okay, so this is the lower platen, which is gonna bolt onto the edge of the desk. I just need to get some mounting holes in it. I am gonna put some arms on it, just to give it a bit more bracing. You'll see that in a minute. Um, it is quite long. <laughs> so I've got a piece of box section underneath here and I'm just clamping it down because I really don't want it moving. Okay, so this is what I'm thinking. Obviously we've got the, the bottom platen here, which is gonna be fixed to the table. Um, it is gonna have these supports welded on, so it will be welded front and back, all around here, and then all the way down, ooh, down this corner. And these will be bolted to the table. So all this is gonna be absolutely solid. This piece will go in there, like so, hang on, like so. Um, it will be raised up very slightly to give it some clearance because obviously we want to be able to lift the platen um, to get the sheet metal in, but it doesn't need to be a great deal. So that's probably going to go flush with the top um, and that gives me a tiny little gap at the bottom, which is certainly be enough to get two mil of of material in there. Um, then this will be drilled as will this and that's going to act as a pivot. So it will just have a bolt through there that's loosely done up, um, probably sleeved just so it's all nice and snug and the same thing happens on the other end. Um, these are just spaces at the minute so I can get the height right, that one and that one, so they won't be there. But this middle plate will be welded to the bottom platen as well just to give it a bit more support in the middle um, I just want to try and spread the load as much as possible but that is kind of how we're doing at the moment um, which isn't looking too bad
Well, that's it, done, finished. I'm loving this. This is really good, actually. I'm really chuffed with the way this turned out. Um, so, yeah, the, the design did change a little bit as I was going along, which is fine. I was making it up as I went along anyway, so it was bound to happen. Um, the blades come down to the very edge of this, this platen. I'll, I'll take some pictures and stick them up and you can see what's what. And I've made a little bit more of a gap. Um, between, it's, it's like a two mil gap, I suppose, um, between this platen and the folding surface. Um, I was chatting with some of the guys from work who are like CNC brake press operators and all that kind of stuff. And you have to account for thickness of the metal and the expansion and contraction in the, the sheet as it goes around the curve and stuff. So it's best to have a little bit of a gap because that way this folding edge won't be tempted to bow out or anything. I mean, it's pretty solid, but you want it as rigid and as straight and all that kind of stuff as you can possibly get. So I have put a little bit of a gap in there. All in all, um, I did buy a bit more material than I needed, but then I knew I'd be changing my mind anyway. <laughs> so all in all, including the bolts that I got for the clamp, um, this whole thing was made for 50 quid. 50 quid, as opposed to, I was looking online yesterday trying to find something that was similar to this. Closest thing I could get was 420 pound. 50 pound or 420 quid. That's like a saving of a million pounds. And I've got the satisfaction of knowing that I did it myself, which is good. So I can take any of these blades out if I want to do, I don't know, a box that big. Then I can take this one out, leave a gap there and just use this part if I want one the full size. And I can add more blades and stuff, as I'll probably do like a hoofing great big one on the end or something. But you just leave them all in and bend it like that. Job done. Let's have a go. What's this? Two mil. I need my socket. So like I said, the design changed. It's probably going to change again. I thought of um, putting in, at the minute, to clamp anything down, I have to do these bolts up. But what I might do is make a, because I've still got some of this, this plate left, so what I might do is make cut out two circles and drill a hole in it, but off centre, so it acts like a cam. That way I can put a cam on this with it to catch it. So it's just a lever that you, pulling it locks it all in place rather than having to to do all this malarkey but I'll do it yeah that'll do it but this will do for now oh no like that probably do with getting some longer bolts as well. <laughs> but I ain't going to be bending anything more than two mil anyway, so that'll do it. Right, here we go. Oh, look at that. Oh, how cool is that? Ah, right, okay. That's interesting. As I lever it up, and then let go again, it pivots back underneath here. So it's quite a tilted mark. Well, let's see how far we can bend it. Right. So this is two mil steel cold rolled, not hot rolled, that stuff's a bit tougher, but two mil is the thickest I'm going to be doing. Look at that! That's nice as well. There's no, I'll, um, again I'll get some pictures of this and stick them up so you can see what's what. But there's
There's no marks on the inside where the blades are, I mean the blades are quite sort of tight together and stuff because I did face them off. There's still a couple I need to sort out because they're not perfect and I am going to make, make, you know, set all the bottoms exactly where they need to be and then I'll be taking all this lot down smooth, I'll do that on the mill. But there's no marks on the inside where the blades join. It's a really nice bend as well. It's quite tight, it's probably, I don't know, radius of four mil, five mil, something like that, which would be fine for me. Absolutely fine. Sweet. Um, the other thing I might do is, um, you know like the adjusters you get for doing your chain tension on a motorcycle? I might slot these mounting holes for the pivot and put an adjuster on here because that way I can move the whole assembly in and out. So if I want a tighter bend, you know, a, a tighter radius on the bend, then I can wind it out a little bit and do that. Because this gap between the two surfaces is now fixed. I was having a chat with some of the guys at work and they were saying for bend tolerances and bend allowances because everything's under compression and you know parts of it are being stretched and parts of it being squashed and everything else you have to you have to allow for that when you're doing your marking up and you're bending and it's always an idea to have a gap here because that way you can change the position of your blades and either tighten it up or loosen it out a bit um, but this is solid it's not it's not flexing or anything which is cool the bend is even throughout the whole thing that is going to do the job He's definitely going to do the job. I'm quite pleased with that. Yes. Right. Um, what else is there to say, really? Yeah. I like it. I like it quite a lot. Um, if you do like what you see, would any of the the, the um, tools that I make for the workshop and stuff, I'm going to be sticking into this playlist. Uh, and it is only going to be stuff like this. So I'll probably do like a bead breaker at some point. I can see me needing one of them. A few other bits and pieces. Um, and uh, we'll stick them all in this playlist so you can sort of see how they're made. It might help someone. Um, but you can save yourself quite a lot of money just by making your own. So in total, this costs 50 quid. So if I was to do it, you know, all in one hit sort of thing, it's probably... I did uh, probably two days, I suppose, but that was making stuff up as I went along as well. So you could you could knock that down. Um, but yeah, that is really really good. I'm enjoying that. Um, we're going to be using this in the next episode um, of the bike project. Uh, if you want to see that and see it being used in anger, I will stick a card in the corner. Um, once the video is up so you can go and check it out and see what's what um, and that's it really um, so if you do like what you see I'd love you to subscribe um, do the little bell icon and you'll get notified of any um, future videos that get updated as well um, we have got some t-shirts and stuff um, with the quick bites logos and that so then all the link to this is all in the description um, go check it out see what you think I'm loving it. I'm going to have to name it. What can I call it? I don't know. It needs a name. I'll figure that out later. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for joining us. I uh, hope it's been informative and helpful. Um, and if you've got any questions you want to do one yourself, you know, if you want a set of drawings or whatever, I'll, I'm sure I'll be able to knock something up. Um, but give us a shout in the comments. If I can help out, obviously I will do. But anyway, laters.